what's your experience on this path so far? Like how, what have you learned? What have you experienced? How has it changed you? Um, it's like, I'm also, I'm coming here and I'm, I'm trying to know and trying to learn about the Western account. So it took me a very long time to get, you know, the basics down, like who's Alistair Crowley, what's going yeah, on. Yeah, sure. And, I've, I've and been there. Magic. So yeah. <laughs> now it took me a very long time to have a rough idea what it means to be a mag magician and what is a cultist and and the academics and then the organizations and the current and blah, blah, blah. It, it took me a very long time to have like a general um, outlook of kind of like I navigate, I can kind of now understand and navigate and I can and I, I have enough reference now, knowing enough magicians talking to enough person to kind of understand like uh, um, I, you know, like, well, if you're in the, in the order, there are different grades and if you're not like, and um, so um, of course there's no one answer and there's no standard progression in this, I would say. Uh, but this is just really, this is really exciting and very interesting because I never, I never really looked at my culture this way. Oh. And even I, even my, my first cousin is a Taoist priest. He, he goes, he does all these rituals in, in the temple. And then he told, he told me these things, but it never really rang a bell in me. So, um, sure. and I think it's, it's true. And it's, it's, um, I, I've, as I have progressed in my, in my journey into the cult or all these shamanism magic all these things i i have i noticed that a lot of people um like i have to come to the west to re rediscover my roots this happens oh. so many times so in a way i am learning about my culture through you right. and, and also because i um, a lot of these um i uh, well, it, maybe it's just not presented the way it should be. It's just like even in a Chinese culture background where I'm from, um, I don't have access to these um, magical aspect of Taoism or these practices. Even if I do, I don't. It's, I don't know. There's like, um, anyways. I'm just saying that. Sure, um, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm very curious. And the, I uh, like what 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 does it look like the, the the this path, what does it look oh, like? And okay, I, I can I can yeah. maybe fill you in a little bit. Okay. Okay. So I guess the the most important thing um, at first, your your primary goal at first is to have a, a way of looking at the universe and yourself and your position in it and that requires what i'd call the intellectual study phase mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. this is going to be a person you need to understand chinese metaphysics mm -hmm. okay um so for example you know you learn about yin yang and bagua and um, all, all these ideas okay um and then that you know you progress you progress through different ways you know like you know the you know the stems and the branches you know um you know tian gan di zhi yeah yeah all these things yeah which you um which you learn you need to get a, a really good mental picture okay or a template a symbolic template of the universe and your position in it that's your first goal Okay. Through through Tian Gan Di Zi and Ba Gua, you mean? You build you build up a language, a spiritual mm -hmm. language, with which to communicate with others in your path, and with the universe itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it real? All right. This is a good. This is a thing. I mean, is that language objective reality? Mm -hmm. Yes and no. Right. So, like for example. The best way to put it is that um, I need, I need a, a symbolic interface between me and the unknown. So we have our we have a, a specially developed language, mm -hmm. you know, 
between me and the universe you know so i understand what it's saying to me and i can try to understand what it's saying to me so i use concepts like yin yang and five elements and bagua post heaven and tree heaven you know um you know all the all the other things you know and it can get quite complex you know how they mix up and arrange um so i built up the symbolic language much in the same way that <clears throat> english or chinese has no you know objective reality something we make up but we can understand each other mm -hmm. okay right i th i think that spiritual systems are like this you know you know um it's very it's, beautiful put yes you, mm -hmm. do you understand what i mean yeah yes yeah, like, I do. like you know like for example computer language or it's an interface between mm. me and you know and the outside if there is a difference that is <laughs> right probably not right because i am i am it and it is me which is the main the number one message of Taoism. yeah what is it number one the number one message of Taoism is I am all, all is me. Can you elaborate a bit on that? There's no difference between you and what you perceive. And what is perceived is not different from you. That means, um, uh, well, I leave you to meditate on this because I cannot explain it. But, you know, the, the number one thing that it's, it's, it's actually it's often quite used a lot in Taoist meditations. For example, when, let's say, for example, in a Zhou Tian Xuan Lu mm -hmm. ritual, yeah, because let's, we're talking about her today. Um, um, so, um, She's one of the uh, um, patron gods of Mao Shan, as I learned. Oh, she is? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Um, so Jordi, she's of most magical groups because she is the queen of magic, you know. I have no <laughs> um, idea. But you do now. Right. <laughs> right. So, so, um, so, you know, she's like Isis, really, mm. with the Egyptians. Well, I or, never thought about... Or, yeah, That's or Ishtar for the Babylonians. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Very similar ideas there. Oh, wow. So, mm. so if I do a ritual for Zhou Tian Xuan Nu, there should come a point where, let's say, me, Zhou Tian Xuan Nu, right? That is the wrong way. Worshipper or, or subject object. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the wrong way. They should be together until you have that yeah what you're doing is just merely words yeah because the object and the subject aren't really apart yeah we're already together yeah but realizing that is like the number one objective of the mystical side of Taoism, if you like, or at least folk Taoism. I don't know about orthodox Taoism, I'm not an expert. But there's no difference between you and anything outside of you. That is that is fascinating. And um and thanks thanks for um enlightening me on that. Uh it's such a um it's I never know that my uh, my culture has this magical way of thinking. Of course. It's 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 beautiful. Or, mm. or sure. Tai Shang Lao John. Mm. Tai Shang Lao John. Or sure. Mm. Well I'm curious, what else have you learned on this path? That um many things, you know, um some of them are hard to, yeah. some of them are hard to verbalize, but one thing is the importance of compassion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no compassion. If you have no compassion or feeling towards people, don't do these things. Why? Yeah. Because it will lead you into danger. Why? You know? 
because without compa without compassion, without the the ability to want to help people, or you 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 already not learned the central message, which is we are all one. Okay. Mm. Okay, and a lot of people won't like this, you know, because they, you know, I'm the big bad Satan guy, you know, especially mm. in the West, you know, where individuality is prized. The but we we are individual too, you know. It's a lot of people fear that knowing that you are the one or with the one, there's a loss of individuality of your uniqueness. But no, you know, because the one where we all rooted in expresses itself through you in in its own unique way so um you know mm, just because this. yeah just because you're part of this oneness doesn't mean that you're um obliterated you know mm. right, so. Mm. Um, so i think that if you if you lack compassion yeah i think you're going to lack a lot of things in and not like the approach, you know, you don't want to be healing people and, you know, um, you don't want to be, you know, under, you know, understand things as in its one oneness, in its uh, uji. Uji, right. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, does it make you any just different being a for a white girl and, and becoming a mouse and at first, and, yeah, and, like being a foreigner and doing all of this. Did, well, did like... it, do, it, do, it does for some Chinese, mm -hmm. you know, they think they think absolutely no way you're now white, but I don't yeah. care, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Um, for my, my teacher, not even a thought in his mind, yeah. What about because, your personal experience? Yeah, because it's, it's it. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I mean, I'm curious in the connection, how did this path, uh, how did you recognize that this is your path? There's got to be something that clicked. I'm, I'm curious what yeah, that is. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, it's really hard to answer because some things are really hard to define. And why did I fall in love with Vicky? You know, mm, yeah. for example, I mean, mm. <laughs> I mean, some things are undefinable, numinous. Do you, do you feel like you bring in different element into the study, being a foreigner, a Westerner, or yeah, you, um, yeah, I do. Are there I mean, any I've other like it. aspect that I do? Know? But I think mm -hmm. you can say that about individuals in general. Okay. You know, when when you talk about Chinese, uh, which Chinese are you talking about? I got Hunan Chinese, Malaysian Chinese, Vietnamese, Malaysian. They all bring their own different, you know. Okay, yeah. You know. But what I'm asking is more like me being a Taiwanese person and immersed in the mostly Chinese background. Yeah. Um, me trying to understand, trying to get into the world of Western account. Uh, there's a lot of things I need to I, uh, I need to bridge the language uh, barrier, the culture barrier. Wait, a lot of yeah, yeah. Wait, there is for us Westerners too. Yeah, you know, um, a lot of the occultism that you were studying in the West is not Western. You know, it's from the Middle East. That's know. true. Okay. I mean, oh, yeah. Am, okay, yeah. Am I Egyptian? Mm -hmm. Am I Egyptian? No. Am I Indian? No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Tibetan? Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, am I Alistair Crowley? No. Mm -hmm. Everything that you approach, you have to study and make and you know understand its roots. Just because it's Chinese, you know. In fact, I found a lot in common with Chinese, you know, mm -hmm. occult. Because basically, all people are people. You know, you can take away the cultural, you know differences yeah. you know understandable you know. um for example you know um actually i like chinese tea this is not a good example right i love pu ah by the way if you ever meet me 
give me I have, poor. I have a lot of really good poor. I'm really oh, into teasing. Yeah, really and, good poor. Yeah, yeah and, and if you practice um, uh, martial arts, yeah, it's going to open up all the... Yeah, it's really good stuff. Meridians. And, yeah. Um, it it yeah, is it's also a jing cleansing, energetic yeah. path, spiritual. Yeah, jing jing. Very good poor. Right, mm -hmm. so anyway, right, so... Um, what was I saying? Yeah, right. So, um, so for example, you know, there's these cultural differences, you know, like, um, I, I know someone I was dating a Chinese girl, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of little differences, but basically the needs are, are the same, mm -hmm. you know, there needs to be respect and love, yeah. and, you know, you know, communication, trust, loyalty, mm -hmm. right? For example, mm -hmm. Let's go back to the tea analogy. Okay, an Englishman, you know, you know, likes to put milk in his tea, even though I don't actually promise. Because I'm by, you know, and a Chinese doesn't. And all these little, you know, differences uh, and don't really mean much. Okay. Go go right, go down to the roots of what people are. Yeah. yeah. They what they what what do they want in life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot of similarities there. I mean, it's identical, not just similarities. Yeah. People want, you know, uh, the pyramid of needs in psychology. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. except, you know, actually the pyramid of needs is a good spiritual model. Yeah, right. So you start off with your physical needs and, you know, mm. contentment. It's also a good model of magic. Yeah, mm. right. Because you can start off with like, magic for your physical needs and then magic and then you can carry on up to the higher grades if you like which is like spiritual contentment you know i mean i think this model um i know it's a bit artificial but basically whether i'm western or whether i'm chinese we, we are the same people you know mm. to think it, there are cultural differences which can cause misunderstanding yeah um um okay i don't like durian durian you know but <laughs> what was your plan yeah, pole. <laughs> but you know so there's you know there's well basically the same people with the same needs and the spirit world yeah it's not different from you know there's not a chinese spirit world and there's not a egyptian spirit world and there's not a we access the same spirit words with different symbolism, that's all. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Right. You know, we may meet the same spirit, for example, yeah, like you're yeah. doing shame, like you're doing shamanism, you want mm. a teacher spirit and it comes as a, mm. a big cat or something. Yeah. Mm. Right. Mine might come as a, as a, uh, you know, a tongsa, you know, like mm. a, you know, tongsa, like a virgin boy. Um, you mm -hmm. know, so, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. It's the equivalent of like a, a bit like an angel in Chinese occultism, like Tongsa or um, um, uh, you knew Jade Girls. Yeah, yeah these are mm -hmm. a bit like our angels to a certain yeah. extent. Okay, okay, now uh, okay. We, we have like Tian Bing and uh, mm. you know, uh, Tian Jiang, heavenly soldiers and heavenly generals, which, um, mm. which we were called. I might see my spirit guides like this, my spirit contacts. You might see it as I, I don't know your system exactly, but you might see it as a bird or a, you know a, a mm. jaguar or something. I don't know your, <laughs> what exactly you do. Eagle, you know. Okay. So you you understand what I mean? I understand. Yeah. We see the same thing, but our mm. symbolic reference might be different. Yeah. So this leads me to my next question. So uh, what's your what? What would you what would be your advice to those people from the Chinese speaking world if they want to embark this journey and learn what you've learned? And how can what can you can you you know how can you what's your advice and um Okay. Right. My my advice is that okay, number one, the Tao is already in you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you can't find a teacher, which is number two, a bit of advice, which I'll come to in a second, first look in here. Okay. Um, 
the second bit of advice is to really find a teacher and a system that suits you. Now Shant suits me, okay, and doesn't suit everyone. Yeah, so find something that, you know, like, you know, like, um, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of esoteric symbolism in, you know, uh, is it Sleeping Beauty? Mm. Uh, she lost, no, not Sleeping, was it, who, was it, no, Cinderella, she lost her shoe, yeah, which is really losing our, in a, in a certain sense, it's like losing part of ourselves, you know, um, right. you know, our, our mission in life, our goal in life, it's just mm-hmm. a, so you used to use it symbolically. You had to find what shoe fits. Okay. And then um, you had That's to find. What... That's very beautifully put. Yeah. yeah. You had to find what suits you. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm not going to force my system on anyone. Mm. You know, in fact, we don't, we don't look for disciples or anything. These, you know, we don't look for these. Uh, yeah. You and I, I, so I certainly. Even though actually quite a lot of our students are Chinese, you know, in in the I'm UK. sure, I'm sure, yeah. of course, yeah. Um, um, so we don't really look for students because they just tend to come. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. we don't advertise or anything, you know. Yeah. Um, it's uh, <laughs> um, so just find what's right for you. You mm-hmm. know, find your truth. It may not be the same as mine, or what what are you good at you know do you want to be a healer do you want to just or do you just want to be an explorer which is okay mm. you know to you know it's brave men and women they explore the spiritual world you know and um bring back that knowledge and, yeah. Um, yeah. which is part of what we do right? okay well we've been talking for one uh, an hour and a half so oh, I don't okay. want to drag on for too long. And um, are there things that you would like to talk a bit more about the thunder magic or the practical Chinese magic? Or do you want to continue to talk about the fox magic? Oh, the fox magic. Yeah, this is an interesting yeah. book. Yeah, so uh, um, just... Uh, yeah, this is, like, uh, yeah. Uh, Ditty, this... Will, Ditty will kill me when I talk about it. So, um, <laughs> so uh, let's yeah. talk about fox magic. It's yeah, fox, fascinating. Fox, fox and magic. I'm, I'm particularly now, fascinated by the the sigils that you drew. Right. Okay. Like these, um, yeah, they, these are traditional designs. They're not my designs, you know. Mm, so um, uh, tell me about it. It's so fascinating for me. These um you okay. know, I don't I don't even find these in Chinese books, like Chinese Yeah, because this is... Um, uh, in Taiwan, not, not even in Taiwan. Like, um, yeah, this I, is initiated. I don't know, um, this with these a... Fu, you have like the the toe and the way, like the head and yeah. the tail. and But so enlighten me. Tell me a bit yeah, more. because you're creating a living organism. That's why what it has it? a head and, uh, you know, you're not just oh. creating like... a. a a poorly trained Taoist, yeah, will either print, get them printed, yeah, which is terrible, yeah. This is against all what Taoism should be. Now, a talisman or fool who is a living being, so it has a head, yeah, and it has a, you know, a heart, and mm. uh, that bit at the bottom is called fu dan, like mm, gallbladder. Yeah, fu dan. So what is a fu dan? Um, fu dan is, uh, is quite hard to explain. It's got many meanings. Mm. Okay, but basically, full down is where the power is stored. Yeah. Right, right, right. That's what I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so it's why the where the power is. It's where the power is stored, but it also stops things leaking. Mm. Yeah. If you imagine a, a talisman, you know, um, as a, you know, if you imagine a talisman as a um, living, you know, a living thing, or a bat, or even a battery. You've, you've got to stop things getting in that you don't want inside it and you've got to stop things pouring out of it you know leaking mm. Mm. so that's basically the function of a food dam mm. it's also a way of um enlivening it some so things that you might not people how to how to make these fulu in your book it's to a certain book. extent yeah wow, cool all right okay but main, mainly i do i do that in mainly in practical chinese magic Okay, okay. So if, I, if you like practical, 
Chinese magic is the is the main book that teaches you basic techniques mm -hmm. the foundation the basic, of everything yeah the philosophy yeah. and the other books are like yeah, come out of that. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, well enlighten me about the fox magic because the Zhou Wei okay. has this will be the, I can guarantee this will be yeah. the most controversial book in China or Taiwan because Huli Hu Li Jin yeah, I was is, quite shocked when yeah. I saw this. I really was shocked. Huli Jing has a mixed reputation. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, for many Chinese, when they read about the fox spirit, yeah. you know, they, can, they consider it dangerous. And, and it is, it can be, you know, right. But only in, da only in dangerous in, in the fact that it mirrors your desires. Yeah, particularly in men because one of the key ideas of the fox spirit is glamour. Yeah, and sometimes this can be sexual as well. Mm. So this is a danger to men in particular. Yeah, the obsession with the feminine in the wrong way, if you understand what I mean. So when you approach the fox spirit uh, with respect and with purity, there's no danger. What I've learned is that so the night tail fox, well, most Chinese people would say that is like an evil spirit, like a yeah, demonic, and that's just, but and that's it, just, and then I looked into the history. It it actually wasn't. It started out being a very like a like you know it's a it's a creature that gives people good luck and fortune. Yeah, exactly. So what so what happened? Like how did it came from that to this? Um, that's, that's a really good question, right? It's the same way. Are you familiar with Tibetan Buddhism? Mm, you know, you know what? Uh, do you know what a dakini is? Dakini. Yes, of course. Yeah. Like, uh, in the same way, there's this like ambivalence. Yeah, mm -hmm. like she can be or Lilith in Western tradition. Yeah. So, on the one hand, it could be this really enlightening. Um, spirit, like that, you know, um, like in the fairy world, which I, I give an example of, it can give you blessings and even um, propel your own evolution in, into immortality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, or it could be dangerous and sap you of your life force and leave you as a dried husk. Okay. But what's the difference? is the difference is your um, mentality in approaching these spirits yeah you get you would get from her what you deserve that's the danger hey tell me more about fox magic like okay. how do you work with her what's it like working with her what do you learn okay um, okay right now, the first thing you learn, uh, right, okay, let's go to the deeper mysteries of Fox. Okay. Deep, on the surface, she seems like more like, uh, you know, for most people, she's an evil spirit who, whose whole goal is to become immortal by stealing the jing mm -hmm. of, pe of people, especially men. Yeah, that's okay. roughly what most people would, yeah. the image that most people would have. And it can happen like that, right? Yeah. Even a while also, ago, there was a news like this in Japan. There's like this yeah, stone, stone break. break. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. So that that's the common picture, and it can happen like that. Yeah. Um, but I I think this shows something about the nature of men. Yeah, not the fox spirit. Yeah. You know that they can um they fear the feminine archetype yeah um you can strip them of their ding you know and um if you if you watch if you watch for example a lot of asian movies yeah all the ghosts are women and the you know, the fox spirits are women and they're beautiful and they yeah. take everything from you yeah. to me this is indicative of Mm -hmm. fear of femininity in Chinese culture right okay um which I doubt of your Chinese words as well they can send the hate mail to me anyway right so 
that's part of it but it's also part of um nature of a deeper mystery the fox the spirit mystery yeah the fox spirit has a two side has two sides one is sanatos death and the second is um uh, sexuality okay now death and sexuality are really closely linked in some ways they're the same thing yeah even though you might not see this straight away you probably do because you're a shaman right so um, these two ideas are interlinked and she can teach you these greater mysteries of sex sexuality and death right she is a portal also to the yin world which women are you know, you know uh, when sexuality occurs they become a doorway to you know the spirit world and bring in the ancestors babies you know, right this is on a basic level you know um so there's a lot of deeper mysteries with the fox spirit which she can teach you about you know eros and sanatos and death and sex are, are two of the most powerful transformers of mm -hmm. human nature yeah they are in, they are powerful forces in the but the most dangerous ones to propel your own evolution and understanding of the universe yeah so she also she has these two colors quite a lot like white yeah which is the she often wears the white dress and has the um which is the color of death and red which is the color of you know yes yeah so the so these two factors alone is it's even in our alchemy we have a point um, under here called me, me, you know, we have some points in our bodies, like which are both the gate of life and the gate of death, like mm. hoi yin, which yeah. is like between, you know, you know yeah. where hoi yin is. Yes. Yeah, for example. Um, so by experiencing these two realities and realizing that the same thing, and um, I mean, I mean, even in tarot, for example, you know, I, I'm not really a hermeticist anymore, but you know, you have the death card, mm. you know, and, um, and you have the uh, the tower. You know, which uh, also represent Eros and Thanatos to a certain extent. Right. There's a lot to be learned from the fox magic. And there's also a link to Zhou Tian Xuan and um, um, uh, Wang Mu, you know, the uh, great Wang mother Mu. of the West. Wang, Wang Mu is like the uh, great oh, mother. Wang Mu, Wang Mu, yeah, yeah, Wang Mu, yeah. Yang, yeah. Um, so there was the link between and the night elf box and um, Wang Mu. I like they're all feminine but I... yeah, you got it you already have it they're all feminine but they've also but a quite a long time but quite yeah but quite a long time ago um um the first pictures of the night elf fox show her um uh, show the night elf fox sitting next to Wang Mu mm. I remember, so the, I remember that. I don't so there's your there's this. your first immediate connection. Yeah. Okay. And Wang Mu herself being originally a leopard goddess, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I read this somewhere. I, yeah. I remember reading this somewhere. So and uh Zhou Tian Chuan Mu was anciently depicted as a bird, like the, yeah. and the for example, the crane, you uh -huh. know, the, the white crane, Bai He. Bai yeah. He, yeah. Yeah, it's obviously a, a symbol of not only esoteric dance footwork, like Bugang, and the vehicle for immort immortality, which is nothing else but death itself and sexuality. Yeah. Wow. I mean, all these things interlink, and it's, you know, I could write a book about it, but <laughs> I don't have the time. <laughs> So how how do you practically how do you work with her? Okay, on and a practical. What do you like what, working with her? What what do you experience? What's the... okay? What well, my experience working with fox magic? Okay, right. I've had when I first started. I'm going to be honest here. When I first started fox magic, I had the wrong idea. Even I. Even though I was I was learning these things, I knew what I should do and what I shouldn't, and what mentality I should. Um, I I approached it in a very masculine way, 
yeah mm -hmm. yeah i said so, you know i i see the pictures and i think yeah you know yeah. and i got my first experiences were you know horrible you know um um for example sleep paralysis um you know yeah i, I woke i woke up and i felt like there's something being um sucked out of my body you know and, um, so sweet. wow yeah and it's, it was so really really frightening so then I wondered. But later, I wondered in a dream, yeah. and work, and you work in the dream with in the dream with her. Well, I didn't wake up in a dream. I was actually awake, you know. Okay. Um, and uh, I was paralyzed on the bed, you know, like a uh, grave, you know, mm -hmm. ghost pressing. Yeah, Yeah, 对, 对. And I, I woke up, and there was this. Um, I could actually see the fox, mm. but uh, you know the. the Kind of like a white head but fading into the darkness but the actual fox's head there and it was like sucking something out of my body and i thought oh my god and it was like oh. i couldn't scream or anything you know which i wanted to it's really scary but then i felt when i look back on this experience that maybe there was something put inside me too you know mm. like an exchange mm. um and that's before i knew that foxes can give you a kind of medicine you know which so, so my, my my first experience is really scary. What what exactly did you do wrong? Like... I I uh, I think I approached it approached it in a non reverential way. Yeah, um, um, greedy okay. for results and uh, know, right. Okay, very common mistakes for magicians. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, but it's so, but later. I think that maybe this wasn't such a bad thing and that there was an exchange going on, not just merely pulling something out of me, but putting something back in. That's so again, yeah. maybe yeah. there's a fair exchange of energy, which people yeah. need to be aware of. Right? Yeah. A typical transform transformative experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. you'll read about in shamanic culture too. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something placed in you. you know? mm -hmm. Um, maybe something which is unpleasant. Like people come to the magic tradition, expect everything to be, oh, you know, no, it's not. stardust <laughs> yeah. falling everywhere and everything. You know, mm -hmm. they don't realize what you have to go through, the sacrifices yeah. that you make. You know, the mm -hmm. you know the, the people you lose on the way, and the you know the dark nights of the soul, and all this sort of thing. Bad experiences and good ones. Yeah, transformations which are painful you know right? they usually are they always yeah so yeah they're also very beautiful sometimes too let's not put everyone off yeah mm -hmm. there's some you know mm -hmm. um so yeah so um that's so approach this book with caution mm -hmm. uh, there are um the other the other aspect of the fox magic though is glamour Tell me about okay. it. You understand what the word glamour means, where it comes from? No. Okay. So originally in um, in English fairy law, glamour was the ability to project a kind of beauty, yeah, mm -hmm. which is not real, but kind of real, you know. So so the same thing is is a power that can be given to you by the fox. Mm. Now this might seem like evil, but it's not. Right? We we live in a world, yeah, where glamour is used all the time. Advertising, cinema, mm -hmm. movie industry, acting, awesome. Hollywood, yeah. 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 So um, the fox can give you the stability to have your own kind of glamour, yeah. Um, which is a useful tool in this world sometimes. If you're giving presentations or you're an actor or a singer, you know, um, she's very much associated with arts and the art artist. Um, she give great blessings to these kind of people that need to offer not a, a, not a world of illusion exactly, but you know, a, a, a kind of beauty which can be appreciated. Right, so um, 
Mm -hmm. It could also um, help the competence of people who are, you know, who are, you know, um, so sort of don't feel confident about their own, you know, physicality. So, um, so it can help people in this way too. There is a practical side to fox magic, which. Are there famous people in history, in Chinese history, who has had practiced this fox magic? Like who has in Chi in Chinese history? Um, or, well, in Chinese history, there've been actual foxes. You know, um, mm -hmm. um, some of them not so good, unfortunately. <laughs> right. yeah, but yeah. some some famous practitioners, you know, um, um, apparently it's uh, very popular with the Hong Kong movie industry these days. I've heard this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Because she can give that, give that, um, I don't know how to say it, je ne sais quoi, you know, to mm -hmm. female actresses, male actors, you know, who need to use the power of projected glamour on television, movies, music, you know, that, that sort of thing. Wow. But that's, that's a low down skill. You know, we're, we're talking about back to Maslow's try, you know, pyramid again, you know, mm. of needs. Yeah, that's on the. Mm. She can help people with um, poor communication skills, shy people, you know, and, which is a real problem for some people, you know. Yeah, of course. Right. So, um, so there is that psychology of social interaction she can help with, you know, so. But higher level, she can help you with alchemy. Please shine light. Well, alchemy. alchemy. Al nei gong. It's not a popular subject to talk about, uh, but nei gong basically boils back down to sex and death again. The Chinese teachers of you know qi gong, you know, they don't admit it, but it's really about transforming. Um, you know um, these two forces in men, men and women you know we have an essence if you like um which extends to our ancestors we call it jing mm. okay jing uh it's the hard word to translate easy. spirit essence you know mm. but it doesn't it's not really belong to us but it belongs to our ancestors and it's like part of that links us to this whole stream of ancestors, you know, it's an ancestral thing that's passed down to you, a kidney gene, I think, you mm. know, some people will call it. Mm. And that is that in itself is an important fact. Mm. Yeah, it, it links you to death, but also life at the same time. Now we know now we know DNA as well, which is quite significant, by the way. Mm. Like as a physical representation of gene, maybe. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. Man. So but Jing itself has that twofold aspect. It's been passed down from you from generations and generations, okay, for your ancestors. Yeah. And there's your death aspect, but also life, okay, because it allows you to reproduce and be creative as well in a certain extent. Mm. And that Jing can be um, not oppressed. That, that's a big mistake with um, introduced by Buddhism. Yeah, that you yeah, have like to, roughly yeah. have that impression. Yeah, now, that's an idea introduced by Buddhists. Yeah, right. Um, because Taoists, we have all these sexual practices and sex, sex yeah. qigong and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have some of those ourselves as well. There's some are described in the Fox Magic book. Thank you.